Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand right now. Let's lift up our hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, for Grace your goodness. Mercy, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. We need you. I wouldn't want to take one step hallelujah. without you, Lord. I'm reaching my hand out and grabbing onto your unchanging hand. Yes, Guide Jesus. my steps, Lord. Keep me in all my ways, Lord. Lift me my, up, my, Lord. My, my, my. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Can you say that to him today? I need you, Jesus. I need a move of God in my life. I need a brand new touch from your spirit today, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Wolf. Can we just give God a big hand clap of appreciation for being in his house once more? If you have your Bible today, we're going to turn to the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 John 1, 9. And uh, I know that it's 1130. I felt my first hunger pain. Lunch is calling. I see a bunch. <laughs> so I promise I'm not going to belabor the point today. Y'all ready? 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But wait, there's more. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to say to you today that I am so excited about the idea that when I can't, what I can't do for myself, He willingly does. When we repent, He doesn't just forgive us. Come on, when we confess, He doesn't just forgive us. He actually washes us and makes us clean. Thank you, Jesus, for the, for the, for the fresh start. Ah, come on, the fresh start today. That new grace, that great mercy. Today I want to preach to you for the next little while. And I, 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 I'm sorry. You came here looking for some spaghetti and meat sauce. We're going to get just hamburger and potatoes today. Y'all ready? You know, if, if you're ever really hungry, I mean, I'm, now listen, don't, y'all, y'all know, we don't get hungry in America. We eat to keep from getting hungry. I'm just saying, I've been doing this intermittent fasting, and I have been reacquainted with hunger. After 16 hours, your belly starts eating itself, and it's going, son, put something in here. <laughs> and so I understand that I'm preaching to the, to the choir today. But my message today is simply this, receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. Receiving Amen. the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Would you clap your hands one more time before you see it? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Just as mountain climbers need their Sherpas, children need their parents, churches need their pastor, seekers need their evangel. Oh, I know it's kind of self-serving to say that, but... Mount Everest is the earth's highest point. I don't know how many of y'all are students of geography, but it's in the country of Tibet. And it, when, you have, when you have ascended to the top of Mount Everest, you are standing on the pinnacle, the highest point on planet earth. And uh, the, the people who, who climb Mount Everest, they, they actually follow one of two well-worn, well-traveled paths. There's really only two sensible approaches to climbing Mount Everest. And uh, along with the heights of Mount Everest and, and the, the struggles of, of taking your weight up that hill, you also have to deal with the unique dangers 
of that mountain. There's frigid temperatures. There's monsoons. Uh, there's uh, high winds. And uh, then they have seasons. There, there's a very small window of time when it's even practical to climb Mount Everest. Now, I know you're all wondering what this has to do with getting the Holy Ghost. Could, could you just endure me for a moment? <laughs> uh, most dangerous obstacle and the one that caused most climbers deaths is altitude sickness. When you get up in those higher heights, the oxygen is less and less. And your body depends on having the proper level of oxygen to think clearly. And so what happens is you get up there in that oxygen stingy altitude and uh, in the most severe cases uh, it causes fluid to form in your lungs. You literally begin to suffocate. It causes your brain to swell. You become dizzy. You, you become what they call hallucinating. And you see things that are not there or worse than that you don't see things that are there. And so, if this happens to you on Mount Everest, it means almost certain death. What are you talking about, Brother Plemons? What I'm talking about is that's why it is absolutely, absolutely a fact that no serious mountain climber would even consider climbing Mount Everest without the help of a Sherpa. Now, if you don't know what a Sherpa is, that's okay. That's why I'm here. A Sherpa is a local citizen, an indigenous inhabitant of Mount Everest. They, they live there year-round. They, they are born there. They grow up there. Their bodies are already biologically acclimatized to process this, this thin air. And so they can carry heavy packs up the mountain with ease. They can go where you're not ready to go. And so you need that Sherpa, mostly to carry your tent, bring up your water and food. But these special guides, these, these Sherpas, are unique people. And for generations, they have inhabited what is called the Kumba Valley. Now, this is so cool. It's a national park that surrounds Mount Everest. Because they've been living there so long, they not only have developed the genetic ability to thrive there, they've learned everything about the place. I know you've heard the story about the little old man. He gets called out on a maintenance job. It's a big, heavy piece of equipment, and it's quit working. And so he walks around it, looks at it, and tinkers with it, and finally he reaches into his tool bag, pulls out a little small ball peen hammer and taps a couple of times in the right spot and then hits the button and it starts working. And so a few days later his bill came in the mail, $1,000 for repairs. Of course the man had been there watching the repairs and he was, he was beside himself and so he sent that bill back unpaid and said, I demand a detailed accounting. What are you charging me for? And so the old man sent back Two little taps with hammer, $2. Knowing where to tap, $998. <laughs> I'm just saying, a, a, a little knowledge is a, is a powerful thing. Come on, when you know how, what could be more thrilling than to know how to help somebody find their way to the King of Glory? I'm not talking about climbing Mount Everest. I'm talking about getting in the presence of Almighty Christ. So these gifted Sherpas, they're guides. But they do something very unique, and that's what I've come to preach about today, is in the process of climbing these mountains, they don't just carry your pack. Come on, they're not just good because they've, they've acclimatized, but they know the pitfalls. But they also know the best views. They know where every vista is. 
And so when you get up there, come on, in your urgency and your haste to make it to the top, you would be tempted to take a shortcut. Hey, why don't we go this way? And that Sherpa's there to say, oh, you, you, you could go that way, but you're going to miss the best view on the way up. You're, you're going you're to rob yourself of the best blessing. There are things in life that make it worth the journey. And I've come to tell you that just like a mountain climber would never consider ascending Mount Everest without their Sherpa, it is impossible for a child of God to plan to make any headway or make any progress without the church. Oh, I'm didn't, I didn't mean to disappoint you. See, we have managers and mentors and ministers. We have coaches, commanders. And clergy, we have generals and governors and guides. We have parents and pilots and pastors. We have superiors, supervisors and shepherds. And they all have one thing in common. They know how to go. Christians need their church. The Bible says, fail not the assembling of yourselves with like believers. This building is not just any building. This is where God's people gather to encourage, to lift up, to guide, come on, to, to lead, to bless. To, and so, like inexperienced climbers need their Sherpas, nobody is going to make it to heaven without their pastor. God shows by the foolishness of preaching that men might be saved. No preaching, no saving. You ought to clap your hands right now for your pastor. We need our ministers, our pastors, our leaders to help us appreciate the wonders that await us in that upward place that we call heaven. But we cannot lose sight of the fact that God intends for us to enjoy the journey. It's okay to laugh and have a little fun. Come on, it's okay, come on, to have a potluck dinner. Well, did I mention I felt my first hunger pain? I don't even like potlucks, but I'd eat a little potluck right now. <laughs> Brings me to my point. Are you ready now? Y'all, I told you what I was preaching. I just I softened you up. I got you ready. You ready? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Amen. Come on, we're talking about the journey. We're talking about making it into the presence of the power of God. The way that you do that is you receive the Holy Ghost. Even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I rise to remind you, you cannot do this by yourself. It is the gift of God. Grace is from God. God, you can't get here without God. Y'all believe that today? Now, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Brothers, not only can you not get in, you don't even recognize it. You don't even know where the door is. You're, you can't locate it on the map. The Holy Ghost teaches us. All of the scriptures that I'm going to use, and I'm getting ready to reference quite a few, are all about one thing, and that's you receiving the Holy Ghost. And the way that you do that, I'm just trying to help you now, is you acknowledge that you need Him, you repent, so you are a receptacle to receive him. And then you lift up your hands, you lift up your heart, you lift up your head, you lift up your voice, and you cry aloud. And that I'm just trying to help you now. If you don't know what to say, I know what I'd say. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, and there's a moment in your experience when you're saying, Jesus, 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 all of a sudden the Holy Ghost comes, come on, and your mind floods with emotion, and your tongue gets thick, and you start making sounds you've never made before, and the Bible said they knew they received it, because they heard them speaking in tongues, and as you're saying, Jesus, 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 all of a sudden, you're not saying Jesus anymore. There's a supernatural touch from heaven that comes into your life 
And it will lead you and guide you and teach you everything that you need to know. That's what the scripture promises. Listen to these words. John 3. They're very familiar. For God so loved the world. Whoo, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Everybody say I believe. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Traditionally, through the years, one of the big complaints about church, church attendance, ministry, pastors, teachers, is they tell us, to repent. They tell us that our life is messed up. They tell us that there's something wrong with us. They tell us that we're broken, that we're hurting. Well, the truth is, you don't need us to tell you all those things. You knew that when you walked in. Come on, you, 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 know, you know what you're going through, what you're struggling with. You know what you did last week, last month, last year. You know how heavy the burden of life can become on your very soul. Well, let me tell you something. The, the psalmist David said it like this, he restoreth my soul. I've come to tell you beyond the daily activity, beyond the don't do this and go do that, there is a blessing that comes into the spirit of a man. Come on, that makes life just a little more worth living. It makes life just a little more bearable. He said, listen to me. He said, you, you are going to have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's where I was trying to get to today. I'm almost done, I promise. Listen to me. The words that I'm speaking into your ears today are not meant to condemn you. They're meant to convict you. If, you, if you'll just go ahead and throw up your hands and send her and say, okay, preacher, I get it, I'm guilty. I did it, I blew it, I said it, I done it. Come on, somebody. God said, listen, I just need to get you to the place where you acknowledge, A, you got a problem. B, you can't solve it by yourself. C, you want my help. And when you began to, he said, he said, when you confess your sins, whoo, I am just to forgive. I don't know about you, but it just makes me feel like repenting right now. I, I'm just saying, he said, would you say, Jesus, forgive me? He says, I will, I have, I am, and I do. Right now, somebody, listen, he don't, he don't wait till next week. He don't, no, 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 no. He forgives you right then. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The salvation of your soul, the forgiveness of your sins is tied to you acknowledging that name. Here it comes. I'm ready. Acts 4 and 12. For neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Listen to me, church. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. It's not if, if, if you try it this way. No, 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 no. My job, my assignment today is to rise and tell you that in the year of 2023, that is 31 days past its midway point. Come on, it is the year of the Lord. It is the acceptable year of the Lord. And it is absolutely, unequivocally the will of God to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about getting it one time and moving on. I'm talking about walking, living, breathing, moving, full of that Holy Spirit that gives you the power to rise up, to do well, to believe him and ultimately to lift us up out of here it was Nicodemus the old rich man talking to Jesus and when Jesus told him son you got to be born again he said come on Jesus I'm old I mean I'm an old I'm 62 I, I can't go back and be born again he said nah you're you're thinking about flesh I'm talking about spirit. You, oh, Come on, you got to be born again. I want you to know again, 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 again. Again. Oh, I'm preaching to you now. Again. I'm trying to help you get to, again. Listen to me. You need to walk through that door right there saying, you know what? If nobody else gets it, I'm going to get it again. If nobody else talks in tongues, I'm going to talk in tongues again. Come on, nobody. I'm just trying to help you now again. Here's what it says. And she, speaking of Mary, 
shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Everybody shout that at me. Jesus. Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. Can I tell you, you can't be saved without Jesus. You, you're not going to receive anything without Jesus. Everything you do is in the name of Jesus. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It, I'm just trying to help somebody in this room. Everything you're going to get from God is voice activated. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Everything you get from God is voice activated. You have not because you ask not. So instead of whining and complaining and groaning and moaning about what you don't have and don't got and wish you had, why don't you open your mouth and say, Jesus, I'd like to have some of this. God, I wish you would go ahead and do I'm just telling you. My son and I, we were traveling in the state of Arizona. And uh, there's this store there. It's called Last Chance. And uh, it's, it's where they bring all of the stuff that nobody bought when it was in the, in the new stores and the Dillard's and the, and the Nordstrom's and all that. And, and they bring it in, and it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of like a, 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 a rich man's you know, goodwill, you know. Uh, I mean, uh, but, when you, but you got to get there at the... They get these big truckloads, and they put it all out on Monday night. And on Tuesday morning, there's a line for miles to get in the place because they know Tuesday morning is when all the good stuff's going to be there because nobody's picked over it yet. Nobody. And, and so, so one Tuesday morning, we decided that we was going to get up early, and we was going to go to this last chance, and, 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 and we was going to get some clothes. And, you know, when you're evangelizing, you have to buy a lot of clothes. You wear them out. You go through them. And people kind of expect you to look nice, you know. And so uh, we drove into that parking lot, and I said, wait a minute. We're not going in there till we pray. Now, I want you to, I said, Lord, I want you to give me a black heart shaper and marks suit. And, Lord, I want it for $25. Are, y'all, are you ready for this? And Corey said, in Jesus' name. And we walked in that store, walked back to that suit place, and there it was, black, heart shaper and marks. Now, this is going to blow your mind. It was already altered. Somebody had bought it and had it sized and then decided they didn't want it and brought it back, and so they ended up in this last chance place. Well, evidently, this guy had one arm shorter than the other and one leg shorter than the other. So it fit me perfectly. I didn't even have to have it altered. I mean, literally, I could have wore it out of the store. You have, I'm just trying to help you now. So we've talked about that through the years. We've laughed about it. My son's reminded me about it several times. Well, yesterday, we got up early. We were going to Dallas. Megs can go all the way to Dallas to go shopping. Well, I ain't bought no suits in a long time. I need some suits, and I sure don't want to pay their, their original prices, you know, eight nine $900 a suit. And so I didn't know Sister Plemons had prayed. And she prayed, God, I want you to help him find some suits. Well, when I got to this Dillard's, there was a blue suit there, and it was a heart shaper and marks, and it was just what I wanted. And uh, so I got it. And so then we got in the car, and we drove 35 miles to, to the other Dillard's just like it. Walked in there, and she'd been praying, I guess, along that way. And I walked in there, and they had the black one that matched the blue one I just bought. And then th- th- there was a suit that we had saw on the Internet. And I said, man, I would love to have that suit. And would you believe that I bought that suit yesterday for one-third of what it cost online? I'm just saying you have not because you ask not. And so if God would give me the suits that I need for the price that I could afford... How much more do you think he's ready right now to give you the Holy Ghost that you can't live without, to give you the anointing you can't live without, to fill you full of faith that you can't make it without? Anybody? Anybody ready to walk with me yet? Stand and clap your hands. Shout yes to the King of glory. He's in the room right now.
Oh, come on. Clap your hands. Shout yes to the Lord. Here's, here's just, let me give you, I know, I want you, I want you to keep standing. I'm going to give you two more verses. I've got ten, but I'm going to give you two. <laughs> if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now listen to me. I know that everybody's not the same person. There's different personalities. You know, some people are wallflowers and don't want anybody messing with them. Others kind of like to be up front and steal all the attention. And there's people that are really loud. There's people that you never even really hear their voice. I get all that. But let me just tell you something. None of those things can keep you from getting the Holy Ghost. I've had many, many, many people whisper in tongues. I remember one time I was in New Mexico. And uh, there was a little Baptist fellow there. And he was a high-ranking military man. I'm talking about he was way. In fact, he was in charge of the military base there. And, and anybody that came in and out of that place, they were under his authority. And uh, he, he, was, he, was, he called himself the little Baptist. And he came to church with his wife because she was Pentecostal. And so I had prophesied to that church that all the husbands that y'all been praying for all these years, they're all going to get the Holy Ghost in this revival. And that was a pretty bold statement because there was quite a few husbands. But the biggest challenge was that little Baptist man. He was about this tall. I'm not making it up. Little stocky guy, tough as a boot. And he sat right on the edge of the, of, the, of the row. And when I got through preaching and gave my altar call, I walked back and laid my hand on his shoulder. I said, sir, God wants you to be first. And he jumped up and ran to the altar. And when he started speaking in tongues, the pastor was so shocked and so doubtful. He didn't even believe it. I said, man, I said, folks, he's talking in tongues. And the pastor couldn't believe it. So you know what he did? He literally got down on the floor and crawled up and stuck his ear to that man's lips just to make sure that he was actually talking in tongues. And whenever he heard that man speaking in tongues, that pastor jumped up. and I mean, he started throwing his, he got it, he got it, he got it. All seven of the husbands got the Holy Ghost in that revival. Amen. And you know why they got it? They got it because they asked. The greatest success that I'm going to have in any meeting like this one is to convince you to just simply say, Jesus, would you give me the Holy Ghost? Jesus, would you fill me with the Holy Ghost? Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins so I can receive the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to listen to me. I told you that story for a reason. That man and that woman were very thrilled. But they had a daughter that was about 22 years old. And they brought her to church with them the next service. And she was the little shyest. I mean, she'd, when she'd say something, she'd throw her hand over her mouth to make sure too many people didn't hear it. That's just who she was. She's nervous, scared, wasn't, couldn't go to the altar, wasn't even an option. And so I just walked back to her, brother. You know what I said? I said, honey... I could tell you're a little shy. I said, how about me and you just go back to the pastor's office and we'll just get the Holy Ghost back there. Yeah. She grabbed my hand and you know what happened. We got about halfway to the pastor's office and she was talking in tongues. I've prayed several people through to the... Listen, I had a, a wealthy couple come to one of my meetings one time and they were Lutherans. And during my service, I told them, I said, if you want the Holy Ghost, you come down here. In five minutes, I'll have you talking in tongues. Well, they left, and they left a little note on my trailer door. Could you come by our trailer? So I went by and knocked on. They were there on vacation, knocked on the door. She said, come in. She said, I just got one question. She said, you told them people last night that if they wanted the Holy Ghost to come down there, and in five minutes, you'd have them talking in tongues. I said, that's right. She said, did you mean that? I said, yes, ma'am, I did. She said, well, let's get on with it. <laughs> and I prayed that lady through to the Holy Ghost in her little travel trailer. I'm just saying it can happen anywhere, anytime, to anybody if you'll just say, did you mean it? Let's get on with it. Let's pray. Let's ask God. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Everybody in this room, you know the drill. We've done this together before. Say it with me. Jesus, I'm asking you to forgive me of all of my sins. 
every evil word, every evil deed, every evil thought in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I'm asking you, cleanse me from all unrighteousness and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Let me speak in tongues as your spirit comes into my life in Jesus' name. Now, I've already told you what to do. I've already preached to you what to do. You've acknowledged your problem. You've acknowledged you need a Savior. You've told Him that you're willing to be saved. You've asked Him to save you. You've invited Him to fill you. Now, there's a secret weapon. Come on, the devil don't want you to do it, but if you'll do it, it'll happen. Throw your head back. Lift your hands high. Use your outdoor voice. Cry aloud, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, he told you, Kotaya, he told you, Robosota, receive ye, Riva Saye, Kiataye, he told you, receive ye, the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, church, get in it. Riva Sataya, Rabahaya, he called no, 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 Hallelujah. You guys doing good today?